Being responsible for your own actions, something so many people overlook and it's where they often go wrong in the Philippines. You find that you can see it online where people go, I've got no money, I've got this, they've had this problem, blah, blah. It doesn't matter what it is, you create your own scenario. You create these issues. And even those guys that go, well, my wife took everything, blah, blah. There was somebody talking about a, I think the guy was from the Netherlands. He sold his house in the Netherlands, then moved to the Philippines with everything, and now he's broke and can't go home. It's his own fault. He should never sell his home. His, his home is his one asset he has. The one solid asset that he could rely on when everything goes wrong, he has something to go back to. That is not something you should get rid of. If it's already paid for, keep it. At the end of the day, land is something that does not diminish. The land is increasing. Uh, sorry, the population is increasing. The cost of it is in, uh, go, getting higher. And at the end of the day, it's not going to depreciate in value. It's going to increase. Even with the recessions that are coming up, land is not going to change that much. It's a bit like Spain. Spain has millions of empty homes. Do you know the ones that are selling at the moment? New build. New build have internal finance. The external ones, because I'm dealing with a bank at the moment myself with a mortgage, I'm saying, you know what? You give me a great deal on it and we'll talk about it. Because I know you've got empty properties that you've repossessed by the thousands, tens of thousands, um, that nobody's living in. So come back with a deal. And I'm just waiting for the bank to do it at the moment. Um, but the whole point here is you're responsible for yourself. Just because his wife ripped him off for everything he's got, he is still responsible for himself. You cannot palm the fact that you sold your asset off to somebody else. Because a lot of people do that. A lot of people, it's always somebody else's fault. There's always, I'm always the victim. If you want to get on in life, just accept the fact that things go wrong. Things go wrong, but the smart people protect themselves against it. The smart people have money hidden away in bank accounts. The smart people have assets that are worth money and very few people are aware they even exist. That's the reality. Even buying a Rolex, a second-hand Rolex, for example, will hold its value. Sit in a box, sit it somewhere safe, it's money if you ever needed it. There's lots of ways to keep money that isn't even taxed. Because obviously, I don't like paying tax on money I earned last year. So why, why should I be giving the government money that I've already paid tax on? So it's much better to buy something of value that is going to retain. Um, antiques is another one. Antiques, at the moment, if you're doing porcelain and there's other, there's quite a few things which have got a uh, depreciated market at the moment, you're looking at some stuff that's costing, say, £100 in five, ten years will be worth several thousand. That's no joke. That's no joke because the market's bottomed out. But at the same time, these things always recover. So the important thing is don't blame everybody for your own mistakes. You have to protect yourself from it. Having these assets offshore in whatever, whatever you do, is your safety net. That is your safety net. It doesn't matter if you're married or not. You know, you've got to have some security. It may be the same safety net as for the whole family, but you secure it. You control it. Because at the end of the day, you need to make sure that you're safe, taken care of, and able to recover when things go wrong. I've seen people trapped in the Philippines because they have no visa anymore, because their wife has turned around and cancelled their 13A and left them going, building up um, fees and late payments and will quite happily turn around and say, my husband's over there deporting, blah, blah, whatever you want to do, because they're blackmailing them to receive a monthly amount of them. You should never get into that situation because those situations um, get harder to get out of the longer they run for. I know several people that are struggling to get their, even get a passport because their wives took it or they've had issues that 
start off very trivial and wouldn't take a lot of money to fix if they'd actually had some money that they secured for themselves. It could even be a prepayment card that's hidden away somewhere for emergencies. Because once you get into a rut, it's very difficult to get out. If you're back home, you go and find a job, you go and work, you do something that will get you back on, on track. In the Philippines, it is much, much harder because there's less people that help you out, there's less people that have got opportunities to give you, and as a foreigner, you've just got bills, you know, because you have bills building up over time. Just sitting there has a cost because your visa is still running. The roof over your head has a cost, and if you have no income coming in, you could be out in the streets and have very little way of recovering from this without the support of friends, family, or anybody else. So the main thing here is look after yourself first and then sort everything out from there. As a breadwinner and a family, as a uh, responsible person, there is nothing wrong with securing assets and funds to make sure that you can continue to function whatever happens. You are responsible. Thanks for watching.